Dateline, April 10, 1996. Dear Mr. Bell, I have followed your broadcast over the last year or so and have been considering whether or not to share with you and your listeners some information related to the Roswell UFO crash. My grandfather was a member of the retrieval team sent to the crash site just after the incident was reported. He died in 1974, but not before he had sat down with some of us and talked about the incident. I'm currently serving in the military, hold a security clearance, and do not wish to go public and risk losing my career in commission. Nonetheless, I would like to briefly tell you what my own grandfather told me about Roswell. In fact, I've enclosed for your safekeeping some samples, which were in the possession of my grandfather until he died, and which I have since had since his estate was settled. As I understand it, this came from the UFO debris and were part of a large batch subsequently sent to Wright-Patterson Air Base in Ohio, direct from New Mexico. My grandfather was able to appropriate them and stated that the metallic samples are pure extract aluminum. You will note that they appear old and tempered and that they have been placed in tissue paper and in plastic baggies for posterity. I've had them since 1974 and after considerable thought action, give them to you. Feel free to share them with your friends in the UFO research community. I've listened to many people over the years discuss Roswell and the crash events as reported by many who were either there or who had heard it from eyewitnesses. The recent Roswell movie was similar to my grandfather's own account, but a critical element was left out. It's that element which I want to share with you. As my granddad stated, the team arrived at the crash site just after the Army Air Corps, U.S. Force, reported the ground zero location. They found two dead occupants hurled free of the disk. A lone surviving occupant was found within the disk, and it was apparent its left leg had been broken. There was minimal radiation contamination. It was quickly dispersed with a water solvent wash, and soon the occupant was dispatched for medical assistance and isolation. The dead bodies were sent to the Wright-Patterson Air Base, for dispersal and the debris was also loaded onto three trucks which finished just before the sunset. Granddad was part of the team that went with the surviving occupant. The occupant communicated via telepathic means. It spoke perfect English and communicated the following information. The disc was a probe ship dispatched from a launch ship which was stationed at the dimensional gateway to the Terran solar system 32 light years from Terra. They had been conducting operations on Terra for over 100 years, and another group was exploring Mars and Io. Each probe ship carried a crew of three. A launch ship had a crew of 100. The disk that crashed had collided with a meteorite in orbit around Terra and was attempting to compensate its flight vector, but because of the collision, the inter-atmospheric propulsion system malfunctioned. Uh, so the occupants sent out a distress signal to their companions on Mars. The launch ship commander made a decision to authorize an attempted soft landing on the New Mexican desert. At the same time, the inner atmospheric propulsion system had a massive electrical burnout and the disk was soon fully really helpless. There was another option available to the occupants, but it involved activating the dimensional power plant for deep space travel. This would have opened an energy vortex around the disk for 1,500 miles in all directions. Activating the dimensional power plant would have resulted in the annihilation of the states of New Mexico, Arizona, California, and parts of Mexico. Possibly even further states would have been affected. Thus, the occupants chose to ship down and simply hope for the best. They literally sacrificed their own lives rather than destroy the populations within their proximity. The dimensional power plant was self-destructed and the inner atmospheric propulsion system was also deactivated to prevent the technology from falling into the hands of the Terrans. This was done in accordance with standing orders regarding any compromise with contact experiences. Grandad spent a total of 26 weeks in the team that examined and the lone survivor of the Roswell crash. His, after, his affiliation with the project ended when the occupant was to be transferred to another long-term activity facility. He was placed on board a U.S. Air Force transport aircraft, which was sent to Washington, D.C. It may interest you to know 
that three fighter aircraft dispensed to investigate a distress call from the transport experienced many electrical system failures as the air force airspace of the transport's last reported location. No crash or debris was ever found. That's it. And the team was disbanded shortly. Well, I realize I have likely shocked you with this bizarre and incredible account, and my seeking to remain unknown likely doesn't do anything for my credibility, right? The metal samples will likely only add to the controversy. I know you'll take all this with a grain of salt, Mr. Bell, and I sure don't blame you. I just hope you can understand my reasons and my desire to maintain my career and my commission. I'm passing through South Carolina with an operational readiness mobility exercise, and I'll mail this just prior to the exercise, possibly from the Charleston area. I will listen to your broadcast to receive any acknowledging or confirmation that you have received this package. Uh, this letter and the contents of the package are given to you with the hope that they help contribute to the discussion on the UFO phenomena. I agree with Neil Armstrong, a good friend of mine, who dared to say at the White House, no less, that there are things out there which boggle the mind and are far, far beyond our abilities to comprehend. Sign me a friend. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection, your UFO connection for the Pacific Northwest. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're live. 6 o'clock on Channel 11 on the CAN Network, and that was a reading of the Roswell letter as written to Mr. Art Bell, who is a radio commentator and an interviewer on the KEX 1190 AM programs. Ron, uh, that was a very interesting letter that you acquired for the Cosmic Connection. Yes, I also have a follow-up letter that was uh, dated to the Art Bell show. So you have a you have a follow-up letter on that, all yes, right? And I if do. I can, the camera crews to show the pieces of the material that you have all have been worrying and uh, have been hearing about. These are the the fragments of metal that have been sent to Art Bell, as was stated in the letter from the gentleman. And I'd like to uh, thank Mr. George Meek for reading that rendition off to us today for the Art Bell program. Bravo. Now this was a, uh, this is a metal, if we could show that on screen, of the pieces of metal. And uh, these, uh, they had analyzed, uh, go ahead Ron, they had these pieces of metal analyzed. If we could show them on the, on the screen, go ahead. Yeah, the follow-up letter that I have is dated uh, April 22nd, so it was directed to Art Bell uh, from our anonymous uh, uh, I believe Air Force officer uh, from the follow-up letter and uh, transcribing some of the information they sent. Uh, just a couple of quick notes here. Um, first line that was read to Mr. Bell at great risk, I am writing to you in regards to the package sent your way. I had the opportunity to listen to the tape recording of the radio broadcast when I arrived uh, home after participating in the mobility readiness exercises. I must say I was somewhat surprised by the negative and closed-minded responses directed your way by some of your own listeners. Uh, there are some other interesting uh, notes in this letter. Uh, there were three teams that were uh, sent to the site, on-site team, in-house team, and a security team. Uh, the credentials of the team members weren't only military related. There were individuals with backgrounds from the University of Colorado. Office of Naval Research, Army Air Force, uh, U.S. Air Force, and U.S. Army, uh, UCLA and Atomic Energy Commission, and National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics and Office of Scientific Research and Development. Additionally, there were consultants from England, France, and Russia involved in also. Now, are they standing up and naming names and naming dates, or are they still going anonymous? Uh, presently, right now, it's still anonymous. Uh, there's... Uh, a note down here about the middle of the page uh, by this anonymous uh, officer at states, I, uh, I'll not likely communicate again. My wife is concerned as that the intelligence agencies will put two and two together, so it is advisable to further communicate this information. Uh, I hope you understand my position. Uh, evidently from my time in the uh, Air Force, uh, he's uh, 
traveling back and forth uh, from Air Force Base to Air Force Base. And evidently, he's part of a, my, I assume, uh, possibly an in, in, in Inspector General uh, uh, IG team. Well, would he be willing to talk if he was granted immunity? I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. Well, I, I think the Congress should make an open offer to any of these Roswell witnesses to come forward and talk. Evidently, from uh, his letter here, because of his security clearance and repercussions, uh, I think that's where his uh, fear lies right now. Well, then all the old witnesses will just con continue to die off and we'll get nowhere because this anonymous stuff is worthless. That's true. All right, let's go uh, look at that, uh, the pictures of the, the squares and the elliptical pieces, the circles, the blade and the vent where they're all sitting there next to one another with, with a quarter showing their, their uh, general sizes. The, the five squares measured six millimeters by six millimeters, and the width of it was less than one millimeter. Uh, these were stated to be aluminum, 99% aluminum. The two ellipticals measured six millimeters by, six, by eight millimeters. The circle measured six millimeters in diameter. The blade and the vent. Uh, the blade measuring 10 inches by one and a half, by 1.5 inches, one and a half inches. Uh, this was a blade, a lightweight, and the vent piece being two and three eighths inches by one and 15 sixteenths inches, not square. These, uh, the blade and the vent had embedded or attached granules that measured uh, when analyzed at 10. Magnanese, 10 iron, and 80% aluminum. The analysis of the scientists that Linda Moulton Howell had these uh, analyzed for Art Bell, a well-credentialed scientist that had been doing work for Linda Howell for her animal mutilation and crop circle um, analyses. So the, the, the people that worked on the analyzation of this material are in, held in heart. They do wish to remain anonymous at this time. And the bottom line is, uh, this has been analyzed as greater than 99% aluminum with no other elements mm -hmm. attached to this piece of metal. Cosmo, here's an interjection uh, to go along with the uh, uh, metal pieces. This is from the follow-up letter also. Uh, the anonymous uh, writer uh, state, Granddad stated, their own analysis of the samples indicated that it was pure extract aluminum as a conductor for the electromagnetic fields created in the propulsion systems. However, critically needed data was eliminated by the self-destruct mechanisms on the disk itself. Uh, furthermore, the occupant survivor of the crash refused to disclose technical information despite uh, a series of interrogative attempts to extract technological data no means could be found to secure the information. Now, that, that's, that's, that's very interesting, and I'm sure there's people out there that are, that are eating this all up, and I'm sure there are people out there who are saying, well, what does all this mean? Why do, uh, we, we keep rehashing this. This is news, ladies and gentlemen. These pieces of metal, it's not every day that someone sends you material that stated that came, and came from a flying saucer from 1947. Well, you bring up a good point there. There's, there's a, a lot of what we do is for people in the know that watch our show. This is a lot of times not beginning UFOs 101, which we do do sometimes. So if any of this is going over your heads and you're not getting it, be sure and give us a call or write us a letter. We'll be glad to explain where we're going with it. Absolutely.